Wholeness, Merry Full Moon in Cancer, December 2020, the end of the Gregorian calendar of uh, for this year. My name is N.R. Silver Tree, and I welcome you to this space. This is the third rune reading of the year <laughs> and the last rune reading of the year of 2020. Um, my the energies that I work with are of nature, the elements of nature and as well as animal energies. So um, yes, let's get to it. So the title of um, this this is part two. Um, to the fire element rune reading red serpent energy the last video was shadows of the flame and this one is called the golden egg and in the last uh, or in part one I discussed um, the importance of burying the eggs burying your ideas Bearing them into the earth, allowing them to cultivate and mature through using the power of your thoughts, using the power of your emotions, using the power of your the actions, the physical uh, the physical habits you partake in every day that will dictate the results of your goals. And so as you can see, I have yet another one of my sigils. And this is in the shape of, you can say, a tear, a droplet. You can say it's, you know, water uh, or fire, right? A flame. And given that I'm in my personal season of fire, the fire element, I'm in my personal season of the red serpent, that is one of my spirit guides. Today, this evening, this night is in the Cancer Moon. Cancer is water. So, my sigil here has two layers. Okay, now, this sigil in general represents the inner child. The outer layer is the outer layer that we de develop as adults over time and the inner layer is what we hold dear, what is most precious, what is most pure to us. And so I, I find it very interesting how my personal um, you know my personal energy that I'm working with right now is fire and then the moon is in the cycle of cancer. So it's, you know, that water energy. So I want to focus primarily on the relationship between water fire elements and as well as the concept of the golden egg. Now, what is the golden egg? The golden egg. Hmm. The golden egg, I met the golden egg about six or seven months ago in meditation. It was near um, the shedding of my life waters, which means that time of the month for women. <laughs> and I um, was working with, you know, the my spirit guide, the red serpent, and I was shown to focus on my solar plexus. And in my solar plexus, in that area, I began to work with this golden light. I began to envision this egg 
this golden light in the shape of an egg, right? And it was very, very, that meditation, that moment really, it made a lot of sense to me that especially in this year, in 2020, okay, where we're in the year of the four, if you're into um, general numerology, I don't get too deep into it, but numbers are sigils in themselves. They carry certain vibrations and frequencies. Um, but it's the four. And four, when you think of sacred geometry, it's the square, okay? The four sides, the box. So, anywho, to me, the egg and that connection to the four energy that connection to the square. If you think about a box, you know, a box contains objects. It can can contain emptiness even. It can contain, you know, physical things. It can contain emotional things. We all carry these boxes in ourselves, these ideas. And given that we're at the very end of the year, and everyone's planning, right? Everyone's writing, planning, you know, putting this idea in this box, putting this idea in that box. Everyone's organizing. Well, for me, in the connection to nature and to more uh, of intuitive and feminine energy, I see an egg. Now, in part one of um, the full moon reading, um, I talked about how the serpents and snakes and reptiles, they tend to bury their eggs in the earth. They bury it um, in the sand. They bury their, their babies and they cover it with sand and then they leave it. And, you know, sometimes the, the serpent or the reptile will stay around the nest and to protect it and ward off you know, other little hungry creatures. Other times, some reptiles will completely abandon the nest and move on. And so that that they have, they leave that egg in trust, in the trust of the earth, that the earth, that energy, that earth energy will take care and protect and nourish and nurture their, their offspring. And so... Everyone has a different egg. I, you know, when it comes to, you know, cultivating your ideas and the things that you desire, your manifestations, things you want to release or things you want to just, you know, you're, 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 you're manifesting, you're, you're, we're co-creators, right? And I envision in the season of the, my red serpent, I envision an egg. Now, as you can see, here we have two layers the exterior and the interior and there's always the dance between the two there are some human beings out there that are really really great with the exterior right that shell of the egg is very thick they don't let people into that the secret most in-depth parts of their ideas and the things they want to manifest they want to keep it secret right and then sometimes even they're so this shell the exterior is so strong and in it's almost impenetrable like nothing can get inside and you know and everyone has a right to that you know having in our human life in our human path it can be incredibly challenging you know, and especially the heart wounds that we experience, the mind wounds that we experience, the ancestral wounds that we experience over time, we just develop a very hard exterior. And then you see the second layer here, right? The inner child. You can even, and you know what? You can see a, not just a, an egg or a flame or a water droplet, but you can actually see a seed as well, right? The seed that's beginning to germinate but my focus here and now at this moment is the inner child right the most sensitive part of the seed the most sensitive part of the egg is the interior and given that 
you know, I believe, um, please excuse me if I'm wrong, but we're entering into the, um, I believe we're leaving Sagittarius, the house of, not house of Sagittarius. I'm not very strong in astrology. <laughs> But we're leaving the season of Sagittarius and we're entering into Capricorn. So it's that fire energy, that passion, that va va voom, you know, and that light, that excitement, and um, that desire. Now we're entering into Capricorn season. Um, either we we have or we will, um, but we're entering into that Earth season, right? Where things that that Earth is a very feminine energy. Um, so back to the interior here, the golden egg, right? The, and the balance between our external world, our external, the, 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 our, our shield, if you will, our shield and protecting what is, what is most dear to us. So I ask you at this moment, However you want to envision this this sigil, this this form that that you see right here on this piece of paper, however you wish to see it. A seed, a water droplet, <laughs> a flame, an egg. Better yet, a womb, okay? A womb holding an unborn someone something that's unborn, something that is that is uh that's a baby, right? It could be not just a physical manifestation of a human being, but it can be, you know, um, just the, the pregnancy of an idea, right? Oh, and please excuse um, little noises that you hear in the background. There's a little one, um, my neighbor's next door, and she's very, very precious to me. Um, but if you hear that, I, please, I, <laughs> please excuse me. Um, so I'm going to pull runes in a moment. Okay. Just two, one that will represent the exterior, the exterior of what you may ask as a human collective, what What's our shield? What What's going on? What's the vibration, right? We're in very powerful time right now, as a, you know, as human beings. I mean, that it's now. I feel like that's so commonplace. <laughs> everyone's feeling it. Everyone's feeling the shift, whether it's spiritual, economic, you know, um, health wise you know, uh, all across the board, mental, you know, uh, there are people who will be vibrating incredibly high and they're doing very well. There are people who are being tested out of their mind. Um, <laughs> and so I want to pull a rune that, you know, will kind of shed the light on the exterior, on the, on our, our, our armor that we wear every day as the human collective. And then I'll pull a second rune that will um, represent the interior, the soft, the most purest, the most innocent, the most fragile part of ourselves. Before I do that, I wanna to touch on the fire-water relationship. Now, personally, according to Western astrology, my, my, I like to call, um, astrology and, you know, things like numerology, human design, Western astrology, Western astrology, Vedic astrology, Mayan astrology. I call them maps. They're energy blueprints that help to guide you. Now, most people put a lot of faith, um, into these systems. Okay. They're programs that help us understand and understand our internal and external realities. I have no problems at all with that. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I am, according to the Western astrology, uh, my sun sign is Scorpio, so water. That's my external, right? Um, 
that's what I show, you know, that that's, that's my dominant thing. When you first meet someone, that's your first impression, right? So it's my water, okay? And then my moon sign, according to Western astrology, is Aries. It's fire. So, you know, and whatever, I mean, everyone is different. You can have, you know, your, um, your sun sign and, you know, and wind and your you know, your moon sign and earth. I mean, it can be any way around. Just take this as it resonates and apply it to where you think it belongs because it's, again, this is so deep. I love talking about such things. But the water-fire relationship. Now, for me, water is an element that is very light, free flowing. It tells the truth. It is the mirror. Okay. It's the reflection, you know, um, it cleanses, it purifies in a much different way, in a very, in a much more subtle way compared to the fire energy. Okay. The fire energy is real. The fire energy is like very like I'm here. You're going to see me and you're going to feel me, feel my warmth. You know, it's, it's, it's very incredible and they can be opposite of each other. You put water and fire together, you know, you have steam, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, they're kind of opposites in a way. Um, but they, they do hold equal ground. And for me personally, I find that um, at times I can be incredibly just super intuitive, just really, really sensitive to everything around me. Like, for example, if I'm in the space of water energy and I'm in a murky environment, like my water becomes murky. It's like I'm that I'm very, very susceptible to energies in that way. And then I have my fire right? That fire energy where I have this internal determination. Okay. And it's, it's like that, that, um, in the part one of the full moon reading, rune reading I did the other, um, the other night, I spoke about how when you have, when there's nothing left, there's no, you don't have a lifeline. You don't have a friend to call. You don't have that last dollar in the bank, you know, um, you just, you spend your last dollar of your emergency fund. Like, I mean like that, that fire energy, that spark within our soul gets us through those moments. And so I, I know I'm just personalized this a little bit, but it's very interesting, you know, the internal flame that I was talking about. Um, and you know, that, last video and then the my external is water so for me it's it's a it's a it's a very interesting dance and given that tonight is you know full moon in a water that water energy it's it's very I felt it today let's just say that <laughs> um, so enough about that I'm gonna go ahead and I am very curious since I, I started off with the exterior part of the shell or the egg, <laughs> um, let's see here. <sighs> there it is. Ah, okay. Mmm. All right, so the exterior energy, again, we have duality. I see, again, the portal. I'm going to try to get that. Oh, uh, I need more light. I'll work on that. Um, but you have the new moon, and then you have the full moon, and then you have the portal. And also you have that four energy. So we have one, two, three, four as well. And, um, 
you know what? I feel called to move it this way. There you have it. So now, at first I was like, well, okay, we have that dualistic portal energy again, but then I'm like, nah, something pulled me to look at it this way. So now you have, I see two people holding hands, that yin and yang, that feminine, that masculine, that community. And then I also see an empty bed. Look, look closely if you can. I see an empty bed. Hmm. Very interesting. I see that we're playing tug of war here. You know, if you can see like the two people, the two humans holding hands, going round and round and round and round in circles. Like it's come, it's like going back and forth. Going back and forth. It's a weird kind of push and pull type of energy that I feel like the human collective is going through right now. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's see what the connection is to the interior. The interior, the inner being as a human collective. Okay, I wasn't expecting this. I'm getting magnetic. Magnetic. See the magnet? It's a U, it's in the shape of a U and then it has a line going across. So the interior. Huh, that's very interesting. Being in connection with our internal compass. Our internal compass, following our internal compass and not being at war with ourselves, with the external war. It's like, it's like there are people that are in a state of tug of war between, between their external reality and their internal reality. And it's causing a lot of mayhem for many, many, many people. Or this could be on the upside because I don't believe in all negative interpretation or all positive interpretation. I believe in balance. Balance is key. I see that this could represent balance. Balance between shadow and light. Balance between light and shadow. You see there? You just flip it. But I do see that 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 tug of war, that yin and yang energy. And I find that what will be most important is to follow, to, to get in contact with your magnetic power, okay? Following this water energy, following your intuition and your desire. The intuition of the heart, the intuition of the, the, your higher calling, right? What is most in alignment of the heart? Because for me, the water energy is very symbolic for heart energy as well. For fire, fire is that the sacral energy, the solar plexus is very sexual, very strong as far as willpower, you know, quote unquote, making things happen, right? Um, it's that, yeah, it's definitely, I, I feel willpower. So you have willpower, you have intuition. You follow your intuition, right? And use your willpower to create that, inter that balance between the internal and external. Being the master of your external and internal realities. That's a very difficult path. 
you know, at times it can be very difficult. Um, a lot of the times we are so affected by and manipulated by our external realities. I mean, look at the world right now. And I feel like this rune is saying, uh, you know, with this push and pull type of energy that's happening between or in, in to us as a collective, we're, we're being asked to be aware of where you're placing your power. You know, you're in that internal flame I was speaking of in the past video. And don't ignore your intuition. Don't ignore your feelings, your emotions, your inner truth. And one more thing that's very important. Whatever, and obviously, and it's very, this is very in alignment right now with this, with the full moon. Because full moon is very, it's, moon energy is very magnetic. To me, it's, it's incredibly uh, charged, you know, full moon energy is, is a great time to release old things, you know, but as far as emotions go, everything is magnetized. Everything is amplified, you know, when the full moon portals open. Um, and so that's, these are, I mean, they're interesting. I wasn't really expecting this. Um, but I will say, you know, it's, I, I see that tug of that push and pull, even within myself, right? But no, if you start tapping into your own magnetic power, you can start creating that balance that everyone desperately needs. I find that 2020 has taught us um, the importance of balance to not overwork yourself, you know? Or to get off your, to get off your ass and get to work, right? Or to let that relationship go, you know, um, and do your commit to your internal, your relationship with your internal world. Or it says to open yourself to new relationships, right? So that I feel like I'm going to. In the reading here, I, you know, this is my third rune reading. <laughs> Again, I'm very happy if you've made it through the whole video. If you've watched all three, I'm even happier if you felt called to continue to, to be on this journey with me into this exploration of, you know, energies and how the, how nature, how we can use and nature as a way of studying our own consciousness um and yeah I, that, that's all I want to share but you know if this resonates with you great if it doesn't it wasn't meant for you and that's okay you know I'm, I'm definitely okay with it I'm not about you know all of getting a thousand views and getting it's not I'm not into the number game I'm not doing that or doing this for that it's it's a calling for me right now on my path and I'm very grateful that I have the tools and this and I'm in the space to offer you know these insights um so with that I hope you continue to use the full moon portal the portal is all it opens three days before the the moon day and it closes three days after the moon day so you have a total pretty much a week of doing energy work um, during the new moon, full moon. Uh, that's my own, how I use the moon medicine. Um, but yeah, I really, really, really hope that all is well with you, whoever's watching this. I send you love and, um, and I pray that you continue to investigate your inner worlds investigate your inner worlds and with that i hope you have a wonderful happy new year please um oh one more thing before i go um i'm starting a new youtube channel specifically for rune readings um and so um yeah i'm i'm 
yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I, I, I'm going to set that up by in January. Um, and then this channel in our silver tree is primarily focused on my, um, sound therapy, uh, service. So I hope you continue to enjoy my, enjoy my music and I hope you can continue to enjoy, um, my rune readings and whatever I choose to create on this platform. Um, again, thank you so much for liking and subscribing and for sharing the video and happy full moon in cancer. Love to you. <laughs>